Okay, well, we can go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to Leveraging DBSA Brand Equity to Strengthen Communications Outcomes. Uh, my name is Olivia Dimmer. I'm the Communications Manager uh, with DBSA. I'm here today with my colleague, Dante. I'll let him introduce himself to you all. Hello, I'm Dante Freeman. I'm the Senior Digital Communications Manager over here at DBSA. And yeah, Olivia and myself today will talk to you about Leveraging Brand. Great. Um, so the session today is really for any DBSA um, chapter leaders, you know, who are involved in, in their chapter support group. What we're really going to be talking about is the DBSA brand overall um, and how you can utilize some of the guidelines and templates that we've laid down to hopefully make your communications process easier at the chapter and support group level. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up my slides here. Okay. Um, so today um, we're going to go through kind of a crash course on branding and DBSA's brand, um, what branding is, why it's important. Um, we're going to review the DBSA brand guide, um, and you all can actually access the brand guide and follow along at this link. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop this link in the chat for everybody in case you all would like to look at this with us. That. And feel free to pop in questions to the Q and A, uh, and Olivia and I will get to them towards the end and and answer any ones that you have. Perfect. Thanks, Dante. Um, so we're going to review the DBSA brand guide, and we're going to talk about some of the resources and design templates that we have available for chapters. Um, so first and foremost, what is a brand? Um, a brand is a product, a service, or a concept that is publicly distinguished from other products, services, or concepts so that it can be easily communicated and usually marketed. Um, so branding is the process of creating and disseminating the brand's name, its qualities, and its personality. Why is branding so important? It seems obvious, right? Um, branding is important because a clear established brand communicates a professional, polished identity and message. Um, consistency avoids confusion. So when you're putting forth the same colors, the same fonts, the same messaging, uh, people start to recognize that and become familiar with that. Um, and that familiarity breeds trust. There's a lot of studies out there that show it takes around five to seven brand impressions um, for a person to even recognize that they've seen a brand before. Um, so if you think about how many times somebody might have to see the DBSA logo, a website, a flyer, before they begin to understand um, what DBSA is or even recognize it. So it's kind of a slow process um, that requires consistency across all of our channels. Um, DBSA's brand is built upon the inspirational truth of our origin um, and the strength of our community of people living with mood disorders and their friends and families. Um, the way our brand is communicated, its look, its feel, its tone reflects what the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance is and what we aspire to become. So what's a brand guide? Uh, now that we know what a brand is, um, a brand guide is exactly what it sounds like. It's a set of guidelines on how best to articulate a brand. Um, by keeping our brand consistent across all platforms, you know, we're increasing recognition, we're increasing that trust, and we're increasing understanding of our mission with our audience. Um, so what we've really done with the brand guide is kind of just set down some guardrails. Um, we've thought about some things so that chapter folks, um, when they're making a flyer or they're making a poster, they're bringing something to a mental health fair, um, they don't have to think about the nitty gritty details. They can pull our colors, our fonts, um, and we're hoping that this will just make it easier for chapter folks or support group folks um, whenever they're thinking about, you know, making any kind of marketing collateral, like flyers, Facebook posts, that kind of stuff. Um, so what's in our brand guide? Um, in the brand guide, you will find logos, so design specifications and the iconography. Um, in the brand guide, we talk about the main DBSA logo, but there are also um, chapter level logos um, that we'll talk about a little bit later in this presentation. Um, in the brand guide, we talk about DBSA's voice and tone, so the way that DBSA speaks and writes what we sound like in our copy. Um, brand messages, right? What our brand stands for, 
what we want to communicate with our audiences at every level. Also in the brand guide, um, we kind of lay out the audiences that we are speaking to on a regular basis um, and kind of describe what those audiences are, who they are, um, and what we're trying to tell them in each interaction. Um, also in our brand guide is our color palette, the typography that we use, the fonts, um, some guidelines around photography and videography, as well as our editorial style guide. Um, and the editorial style guide deals with some stuff around punctuation, grammar, how we handle titles. Um, some of the grammar nerds in this room would maybe get a kick out of it, um, but that's within the editorial style guide. Um, so logos, why are standardized logos important? Um, when we utilize a standardized logo template, we create the sense of clarity and cohesion. Um, so when our logos look similar across chapters, across um, the organization, people begin to recognize and understand what it is that this chapter does, what they do, how they fit into the whole picture of DBSA. Um, so by utilizing these standardized templates, we're kind of making it easier for people to understand who, it, who we are and what we do um, and avoiding kind of the confusion of, well, this looks different. Is this a different organization? Um, it's really all about helping people who are living with uh, mood disorders to find what they need. Um, and by kind of keeping it standard across the organization, we're giving that clarity. We're letting people know who we are and what we do and, and how they can find community, find wellness and find hope. Um, each chapter should have received their updated chapter logos from Jill. If you have not, um, I would recommend you reach out to Jay Burgos at dbsalliance.org um, and ask her to provide the updated logos. We can email you a set of those as well. I think I saw somebody raise their hand. Um, I would invite you to pop your question in the chat or the Q&A. Unfortunately, with the raised hand, we, we don't get to see um, the participants. Um, but I'll keep an eye out for that question and keep going and we can come back to it if it comes up. All right. So Olivia just walked you through um, your logos and what is a brand and um, about the brand guide. But let's talk a little bit about the audiences. So who are you trying to reach? Who are you talking to? And the first set of um, the first set of audiences that we want to think about are people living with depression or bipolar, what DBSA defines as peers. So that's many of you in this room um, or that's someone that you are supporting and you know. This audience is probably your most important audience. Um, it's the audience that uh, is going to have both the most intentional messaging that you have and the audience that is going to have messaging that um, ranges across uh, age, race, gender, class, geographic location. Um, this is who we serve and we need to make sure that we're connecting our resources and support groups back to peers, but also reinforcing the brand back to them so that when someone sees that the DBSA Blue Square, they see fine community, fine wellness, fine hope, they know that that is a brand that is for peers. Another uh, audience that we often reach out to um, are family care partners of people with mood disorders. We know that a lot of people um, get help through DBSA whether chapter support groups um, through their uh, a loved one, a family member. Um, these might be partners, life partners, care partners, siblings, or, some, or a friend, someone who is supporting someone that lives with a mood disorder. Um, we provide them, we want to make sure that we're when we're talking to them, we are talking about the education, educational resources and wellness tools that can help not only themselves, but the peer that they're supporting. Um, this is very important when we're talking about our youth mental health initiative, um, because a lot of times we are, uh, we have developed tools like the mood crew. So when you're speaking to this audience for children who may not access it on their own, but their um, caregiver or parent will access them. Another set of audiences that we have are clinicians. So most a lot of chapters work very closely with clinicians to do like webinars or have a, a, a clinical expert in the room. And these are healthcare professionals who um, provide an uh, invaluable resource for DBSA and our community. Um, 
we want to make sure that clinicians know that peers are here to help uh, them and that they there is a wealth of clinicians who believe in the DVSA mission um, that want to help peers directly, right? And so how do we, um, when you're talking to clinicians, you want to demonstrate the value of DVSA's mission and how you can get peers and, or I'm sorry, how you can get clinicians involved in those decision-making processes um, for you. It's very important to reach out to clinicians, especially if you are, um, especially if you are holding like a webinar or you are um, doing like a, a talk or something, it can be great to have that, um, that person in the room, that voice in the room. Policymakers, legislators, and thought leaders are also another audience that we reach out to. DBSA wants to influence policy that affects peers, right? Um, so any act um, that's happening on your uh, local city, state, or even at a national level, it's important that we are um, connecting with those policymakers to make sure that DBSA is making a impact um, on the world in which we live that um, directly affects peers. Um, so we do this with curated persuasive educational materials. Uh, we also do action alerts. Uh, we may craft an email, send out tweets, what have you to, um, to a senator, a congresswoman, um, or say support this bill. We usually provide that information. That's how we reach out to policymakers. And then lastly, but not that certainly not least, least donors. Now, any of the previous audience I talked about can also go in this donor audience, right? And so, um, but they also might not be connected to any of those previous audience either. Um, but our donors help us and you continue the DBSA mission. Without their support, we can't do this. So when you're talking to donors, you want to demonstrate the value and the impact um, that DBSA is making. And specifically, if you're specifically if you're doing it on a local level, it might be easy for you to show a donor like, "Hey, DBSA holds DBSA um, North Dakota holds X amount of uh, support groups that has helped bridge the gap in um, mental health access to mental health resources," and that can entice someone to donate. Yeah, and um, one of the reasons we really wanted to nail down our audiences and um, some of you who are maybe in the session on Monday about building your communications plan, you know, um, it's a lot easier to build your communications plan when you know who you're talking to and exactly Absolutely. what you want to tell them. Um, so what we really tried to do with the brand guide is nail down at the national level, at least, who DBSA is talking to and what we want to tell them. Um, and we're hoping that this can be a helpful resource for chapters folks as they go about making their own um, communications materials. Um, so voice and tone. What does DBSA sound like? Uh, what does our copy look like? What um, kind of feelings are we trying to communicate um, when we write about DBSA, our community, and the work that we do? Um, so in general, DBSA's tone is compassionate, right? We don't uh, minimize the experiences of people living with mood disorders. We don't really make jokes. Um, some people are really lighthearted about mental health, um, but our tone is very compassionate um, in that we believe that each person living with a mood disorder um, can find community, find wellness, and find hope if given the proper um, opportunities and support. Um, our tone is also authoritative. Um, DBSA has been in this field for a long time. We are the leading grassroots nonprofit um, by and for people living with mood disorders. Um, so we should sound like it. We, we really are the experts in this field. Um, so when we're writing and speaking on behalf of DBSA, we want to make sure that we sound um, like we know what we're talking about because, because we do. We have this um, tendency to maybe be um, a little bashful about the, the work that we do or maybe not wanting to brag about you know, the work that we do. Um, but the truth is that DVSA's work, the work that all of you do at the chapter level, um, save lives. So, so we should talk about it like it does because it really is that important. Um, DVSA's tone is also empowering. Um, as much as possible, you know, we, we aim to highlight um, the positivity in the experience of living with a mood disorder. Um, we aim to be hopeful and empowering for every person that we encounter. Um, we're also bold. DBSA imagines a world in which wellness is possible for each person living with a mood disorder. Um, and when you really think about what needs to go into that to make that a possibility, that's a bold mission and a bold vision. Um, so our, our tone should match that. 
Um, we're also clear and concise. Um, so when we're talking about peer support, right? A lot of people outside of DDSA don't know what peer support is. So if you're talking to an audience that has never attended a support group before, it's really important to be clear and concise about what you mean. So when you say peer support, um, explain that a little bit, expound upon that um, for, for first time readers and audiences. Um, also serious, but approachable. Like I said, you know, we're compassionate, we're the authority in this space, um, but above all else, we wanna be approachable, we wanna be welcoming um, for people who read our content, read our copy, come across a flyer. Um, that's the voice and the tone that we're going for always. So we're talking about messages, right? You wanna make sure that you have a clear objective and that you are tying your messaging back to that objective with a piece of communication, with a piece of content, right? So whether that's a social media post, a blog post, a um, uh, uh, op-ed, whatever, make sure that you have that clear defined objective for your, um, for your communications plan in your brand guide, wherever you have it, and then tie it back. Um, we have some guidelines around messaging, um, especially around general messaging that you can look at in the brand guide. Olivia popped that into the chat for you. What I'll say is figure out which of those audiences you fit in or you more closely relate to. So whether you are a peer or maybe you're a friend to family or maybe you are, a, you know, you more relate closely to a policymaker, figure out which one you fit in and then think about the messaging that resonates with you. And then how can you tie that back to DBSA's mission or to the objective that you have? So if you're a peer and you are support groups have really impacted you, think about what you would want to know about support groups when you didn't know, uh, um, when you didn't know DBSA existed and then create content around that messaging so that you can attract more peers. Yeah, I think in general, um, people are inundated with so many pieces of communication, so many messages nowadays that you really have to be upfront about what's in it for them, right? Mm -hmm. People are kind of selfish that way. They wanna know immediately, why does this matter to me? Why should I care? Um, and the way that you would talk about DBSA to a friend or a family member of somebody living with a mood disorder um, would be a lot different than the way you would talk about DBSA to a clinician or a pediatrician. You know, you might talk about the different resources that we have, um, the different support groups that we have, but you would talk about them in a different way um, so that it would really resonate and speak with that audience member. Um, so with the messages portion in the brand guide, you know, we have kind of some general messages that we've laid out, um, but we really encourage each and every one of you to think about um, the message that you're sending with each piece of communication. Yeah, that, that's a very important piece, it, especially if your messaging is going to center around um, needing support for more support groups. You can take that support group model and then break it down to, okay, how would I talk to support groups about a potential person joining? How would I talk to support groups um, a, to a clinician? How would I talk about support groups to friends and family? And that can help you start your own communications plan and then you can refer back to the brand guide um, to make sure that you're on those general messaging. Um, trends. It's not It's not hard. It might be a little time consuming, but it's definitely not hard if you break it down that way. Um, let's talk about DBSA's color palette a little bit. If you um, interacted with DBSA's social media, if you've been to DBSA's website, you've gotten a flyer from us, you should recognize these colors. Um, one of the reasons we want to use these colors, um, just as Olivia said earlier, is it creates, um, it makes an impact on people uh, relating to and re remembering our brand, right? So they know if they see any of these colors on when they're scrolling Instagram, if they see a flyer that that's a DBSA event, and it gives um, it gives authority to that that this is something legitimate that DBSA is um, putting on and that we're putting our stake in. Uh, if you want to drive me and the comms team a little bit uh, up the wall. Uh, is to slightly deviate from any of these colors. Um, that's why in the brand guide, we give you every version, uh, we give you all of the numbers, uh, the hex numbers, the RGB, whatever you need for these colors, if you need it in print or digital. Uh, I know it's so easy to say like, oh, that pink is really close to their pink. We really want you to use that because we want to be as consistent um, with coloring as you are so that, again, that legitimacy is there. If it came from DBSA, 
LA or DBSA headquarters, uh, we're using the same colors. Yeah, and it takes some of the guesswork out of it too. You don't have to guess if this is the right color blue or the right yeah. color pink. You know, if you look in the brand guide, you're going to have all of the numbers, all of the anything you would need to get these colors on almost any platform. And what's nice about the brand guide is if your chapter is doing any kind of work um, with a vendor, say you're hiring somebody to make a, a poster for you and your chapter to walk in a 5K affair, whatever, you can send them the whole brand guide and they will have everything that they will need um, to design that material for you. So it's really about making it a little bit easier and taking some of the guesswork out of that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, DBSA works with a handful of vendors where we just, they ask up front for our brand guy and it makes things so much easier and you can do that too. We're talking about uh, typography here. Um, you should also recognize these um, these fonts if you've ever seen anything, especially on social media from DBSA, right? So um, the Cecilia font there, um, you can see it or read it. It's more in the brand guide for you, uh, for you to use in the Calibri font. Um, so uh, you're also allowed to uh, use the web font. So if you ever been to our website and you're like, hey, what is that font that they're using there? It's that Arvo font. You're also able to use that font as well. I would stick to more digital with Arvo if you're laying out like a, a, a blog post or an article that you're writing rather than like a social media post. If you're gonna do a social media post, um, we stick really closely to Calibri. If we wanna get like a very, uh, uh, a strong headline, we may use uh, a Cecilia for that. Um, but for most of your needs, you're gonna stay with these two fonts. Um, and now we can talk a little bit about the editorial style guide. I'm also gonna grab that link for you all. Um, and pop it in the chat. Um, but what's really nice about the editorial style guide is if you've ever been in a situation where you're not sure, um, you know, how, uh, how some commas are handled, how a semicolon is handled, um, if a certain word should be capitalized or not, uh, most of those things are laid out in um, the editorial style guide. Um, so that's really going to be your reference if you ever have a question about copy, um, about how we handle dates, times, titles. Um, it's a really handy reference. DBSA follows the Chicago Manual of Style, which is a pretty big uh, manual of style that lots of journalists and other reputable organizations use, so you can reference that. Um, but for a lot of the quick hits, um, instead of trying to hunt around for a version of the Chicago Manual of Style, um, you can reference the editorial style guide and that'll usually get you um, where you need to go as far as um, consistency and knowing which um, style choices DBSA prefers to make. Um, another thing that I think is really exciting for chapters um, is that we have a couple of design templates available for chapters and support groups to use for promotional purposes. Um, some of the graphics are for social media. Um, so we have some for Facebook and Instagram if your chapter is using um, those social media platforms. Um, there's also printable flyers for promoting promoting support groups. Um, so we um, utilize Canva for this, which is a really great online platform. Um, it's really user friendly. I think it's really easy to use and um, you kind of open it up and then you're able to fill in the text boxes yourself. Um, so we have printable flyers for promoting support groups, um, email header graphics. Um, a couple of things that, you know, might be useful for your chapter as you think about um, what kinds of communications you want to send out later this year in the new year. Um, to get access to those, um, you should email media at dbsalliance.org um, and somebody from the communications team will follow up with you to get you access to the templates um, that you would like to use. Um, Another thing about the, the templates is DBSA puts out um, toolkits throughout the year and in those toolkits in the social media portion, you can also find other templates like headers or um, we may have done a different flyer for um, that year that you can use. So always look out for those toolkits and what downloadable assets we have. Yeah, that's a really great thing to mention, Dante, thanks. Um, so as you can see here, you know, on the left here, we have a mock-up of what a flyer could look like. You know, if you want to post a flyer about your support group in a grocery store, a bulletin board, wherever it may be, you want to go to an event and hand out um, a flyer about your support group or your chapter, 
Um, what we can do is give you access to this template. You can go in and fill in the when, the where, um, some information, um, your local chapter's information, and suddenly you have this beautifully designed, professional-looking flyer that you can hand out to people in your community. Um, same for social media graphics. Um, if there's a post that you want to make, an event you want to um, promote, a webinar, whatever it is, um, you can go in and edit the text on these templates, which makes it really nifty um, for making well-designed, eye-catching graphics um, without having to hire a designer and go through that whole process. Um, so again, if you would like access to these templates, we're more than happy to give them to you. Um, we just ask that you email media at dbsalliance.org and we'll give you access to those. Yeah, and if you need to make slight variations to either of these things, like Olivia said, we're usually able to do that fairly quickly, depending on our workload. Um, and so uh, just let us know. We will either create another template for you or we will um, edit the template that we have to make it fit your needs. We are really trying to take most of like the, the guesswork out of this and um, get you to a point where you can just um, download the flyer, put in your information and get it out to the audience that you need. Yeah. Um, so that is our presentation. Um, at this point, we're happy to answer any questions that anybody would have um, either in the Q&A feature or in the chat. Yeah, I know um, Jennifer asked, could she use other colors? Um, besides the one that we show. And absolutely, right? We live in the social media world. You're going to use more colors than that. Um, but if you are working on something specific um, that calls for using the brand colors, they're there. Those colors also are obviously apparent on our website and you'll see them on our own social media. So um, yes, you're feel free to use other colors, but those are the brand colors that we um, that we have. Yeah, and if you look on page 14 of the brand guide, um, there's our primary color palette, and then we have a secondary color palette as well with some options. Um, and we also have the specifications laid out for the color palette that we use for the Mood Crew, um, which is a little bit different from our main color branding. Um, so yeah, if there's a use case where you need to use a color, you know, we're, we're not in the business of policing colors, um, but we have laid out the brand colors that we use frequently and like to use just so it's easier for everybody to understand um, which ones. Yeah, and obviously too for like special special months. So like during Mental Health Awareness Month, you'll see us use that green. Um, for um, Giving Tuesday, we'll use the Giving Tuesday red. So there are places where, again, there are special use cases where we will use additional colors. So two questions about the PowerPoint. Yeah, um, so I'm more than happy to send out a copy of this PowerPoint to anybody who wants it. If you wanted to email media at DBSA Alliance, I can send you that. Um, this webinar is also being recorded and will be available for you to watch again in the VFairs platform. And then we'll also be making it available um, on DBSA's YouTube channel as well. So it's kind of an enduring um, webinar resource that you can look back on. Um, so either way, if you'd like the PowerPoint slides, feel free to email uh, media at dbsaalliance.org, um, or you can watch it in the Summit platform, the whole webinar. And we just use the DBSA logo without the associate chapter name so that we maintain our, our identity. The support groups and chapters should have gotten um, their own logos, right? Yeah, um, so earlier this year, we put a lot of work into creating um, logos for each chapter and support group with their chapter or support group name underneath the main DBSA logo. Um, if you've recently converted or if you're not sure where um, your logos might be, um, I would encourage you to reach out to Jill Burgos. Um, she is the one who's kind of been sending these out to the chapters folks. Um, so she'll get you uh, the logos that you need for your support group. Yeah, we understand how hard it would be to have like DBSA chapter and then the support group underneath it. So yeah, most chapters, I mean, most support groups also have. Um, we were told that 
we had to use the associated chapter name. Okay, Ray, um, I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to have you do is email Jill and CC um, Media as well and so that we can get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I think usually we ask that chapters and support groups use the logo with their chapter and support group name, just so people aren't confused. You know, if a piece of communication is coming from a national or coming from a chapter organization, um, because those points of contact might be different, right? They might be going to different websites. So we wanna make sure that we're as clear as possible about um, which DBSA chapter support group is creating or disseminating um, a piece of communication. Um, but yeah, we can, we'll follow up with Jill um, in more detail. Yeah, and I know that certain regions is a little different. And so Ray, that may be your case that you're in a place where the, the chapter is what you need to use. And I don't want to step on Jill's toe, so yeah. Any more questions for us? Okay. Um, I don't see. Oh, another question from Jen. Is it okay to bring this info up to a local mayor? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Could you elaborate, Jen? I'm just not sure what the question is asking. I want to make sure that I understand before I. Um, oh, will we help you change our website to the new logo since my website designer is not available? So what we will do um, for anyone who needs uh, a logo for their website is we will resize it. We will put it in the right format for you. We will, if it needs like something weird to be changed, we will do all of that for you. What we can't do is get in the back end of your website, unfortunately, and change the logo. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that expertise on our staff either. We work with um, a third party company to help us with that stuff too, that helps run our website. Um, but we'll try to offer as much insight as we can. Um, if you want to voice DBSA support, talk about your support groups to your local, um, legislature, your, your local government. Okay, yes. Uh, what we would recommend that you do is look at that brand guide under where we talked about legislators, local government, um, familiarize yourself with a little bit of that. And then, um, Jan, I would recommend that you figure out exactly what you want to talk about, whether it's support groups, whether it's how you're bridging the mental health gap um, in your community whether it's the support that you, more support that you need from your local government and your community, figure out what that objective is. And then yes, use this brand guide, brand guide to craft messaging that will resonate with your um, local government. Yeah, and just to be clear, the brand guide really is an internal document um, mm -hmm. for DBSA staff and DBSA vendors. Um, so the brand guide is probably not something that you would wanna show to like a potential um, support group attendee or like a legislator who knows nothing about DDSA. Um, but what the brand guide is, is a tool for us to use um, internally to think about the messages that we're sending, the people that we're talking to and making sure that we're all on the same page. Thank you for your questions, Jen. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Um, are there any other questions? Feel free to pop those in the Q&A or the chat. Um, but like I said, this uh, session is being recorded and will be available for you all to watch um, after we're done here today. Um, it's also gonna be put on DBSA's YouTube, so it will kind of endure and live there for a while if you ever need to come back to it. Um, and if there are any other questions that people think of, 
Um, after this, I'm going to pop our email in the chat once more. Um, you can reach out to either of us um, and we'll work to get you what you need. Absolutely. And um, to anyone who also had questions like um, Jen had, if you weren't able to watch the chapter communication strategies um, session on Monday, um, that will be uploaded to YouTube here shortly. I would recommend that you do that because you would be able to blend this sec the stuff that you learned about the brand guy and the stuff about crafting messaging together. Um, and yeah, I think it will be invaluable. Also, you get to see me again because I was in that one. So. Okay, cool. Um, well, thank you all so much for your attention, um, for your interest, and for your questions. We really appreciate it. It's always great to be able to chat with some chapter folks. Um, but that's it for us. So thank you all so much.